All right. So, hey, it's Alan Thomas with Rethink Dieting, and I've got one of my favorite people here, is Rethink Dieter Stuart Davis. And Stuart's uh, been uh, in the Rethink Dieting program since uh, really the beginning of the year. And uh, Stuart, introduce yourself to everybody. Tell them who you are, where you're from, and then we'll kind of get into some questions. Tell about your amazing transformation you've had. Well, yeah, I'm happy to be here. As uh, Alan said, I'm Stuart Davis. I live in Houston, Texas. I uh, lived here now for about 10, 11 years. Um, and I work for, I'm a senior vice president uh, at a very large property management company. We have a, both a multifamily and a student housing division, and I'm on the student housing division. I've been in student housing my entire career. So uh, this is where I will retire. Uh, I, will, I will ride this to retirement. There you go. Well, yeah. awesome. Well, well, Stuart, when you and I met, we uh, we met at the very end of 2020. Uh, I think it was like the next last day. It was uh, the 30th is when we actually met. And then you got in the Rethink Dieting program. Yes. And if you do you mind telling people how young you are? You mind I, I'm 61. I'll be 62 in August at the end okay. of August. So coming up on 62. So nobody can lose weight over 50. So you, how, you know, that's, that's impossible. Right. I'm, and I'm kidding, of course. And, and so, you know, kind of walk people through, I mean, you, you've, you've had really a, a, a pretty, pretty amazing transformation. And, and in fact, we were just talking about this before we, before we started, I'm going to, I'm going to share this picture, talk about, and I've never done this. Um, hang on. Let's see if I can pull this up real quick. I'm, Talk about this guy on the left. Um, this, this is this is the the pre rethink dieting steward. The one on the right was last night doing his uh, right. his selfie there in the mirror, which is cool. Which is cool. Talk about that guy. What what was running through this guy's head before you know you started losing all this weight? Well, you know, I I know exactly where I was when this picture was taken. Um, you know, I had to really go back in my photo bank to even find a picture because I was not a person who liked having his picture taken. And I usually tried to hide behind someone or a chair or a plant. And if you noticed, I'm in a black shirt. I always, when I went out, tried to wear a dark, you know, a dark piece of clothing. Um, but I was at a dinner to meet an old friend who was in town, um, with his son visiting Rice University and he called me and he said, let's get together. And I tried to think of a thousand reasons why I couldn't go. Um, but um, I went uh, and, you know, this is a friend who I've known since working at Georgia. So it's been 20, 25 years and he's always been healthy. He's a cyclist. And I thought here, I'm going to show up 25 years later and I'm just as heavy, if not heavier than I've ever been. Um, I had a lot of health problems and, um, you know, a lot of health issues that developed over those years of being really overweight and unhealthy. And I thought, and I'm going to meet with this guy who, you know, is, you know, bicycles, you know, 60, 75 miles every weekend. Um, so while there was a smile on my face, I was um, hating the fact that our picture was being taken. Um, that I had nothing to hide behind. And, um, you know, it was just, it was a very typical feeling of how did I get to this point where I've been so successful in my career, mm -hmm. but I can't seem to get myself healthy. So yeah. that's, that's what was going through that guy's mind. Wow. And yeah. you, you mentioned your health. I mean, and, and I don't, you know, because I, when you came into the program, I tell you the same, I told you the same thing. I tell everybody that, you know, I'm never going to tell you what to eat. Right. And I'm never going to tell you what exercise to do because that's not the problem. And, and we'll right. talk more about that, but, but kind of walk through, you know, walk through the typical doctor's appointment. Cause you and I talked about that some, you know, in the past, if you don't mind, I mean, yeah. sharing some of that and just kind of walk people where your mindset was. Then. Well, yeah, of course. You know, I mean, at my heaviest, I was probably a little over 300 pounds. I want to say I was about, you know, 304, mm -hmm. 305 pounds. And I, I, uh, I was diagnosed with type two diabetes. Well, you know, I did that to myself and, um, and I wasn't surprised when I got the diagnosis and, you know, you would have thought that that would have spurred me on to 
you know, a change in lifestyle, but it, it, it didn't, it really didn't. I, over the years, you know, I would take off maybe 10 pounds or 20 pounds and I'd gain five back or 10 back. And, um, you know, I, I kind of got myself down into increments. Um, but every time I went to the doctor to have my blood tested, my A1C, I knew what I was going to hear. I knew I was going to be, I knew it was going to depress me. I knew I was going to be disappointed. And I knew that I was going to be disappointing the doctor who time after time after time said, this is in your control and you're not controlling it. And, um, you know, just before I joined up with you, um, I had a doctor's appointment and my, you know, if you know anything about type two diabetes, they are always looking at your blood sugar, your A1C is what they measure. And that's the measure of your blood sugar over, you know, a period of three months. And mine came back higher than it's, you know, ever been. And the doctor said to me, I, I have nothing else in my arsenal for you. Mm -hmm. You're killing yourself and I have no other medication to give you. You're at the upper limits of everything that you can take and the dosages that you can take. And, um, and you know, when I left that appointment uh, and did what I always did, and that was drive through McDonald's, pick up a, you know, 12 pack of nuggets and fries and, you know, just tried to, you know, drown myself in sorrow with comfort eating. Um, and, but I knew that I was at a very dangerous place and I knew I needed to make a change. And it was somebody in your group who I knew mm -hmm. and he had invited me to be on his own personal accountability team. Mm -hmm. And I said, by golly, if he can do this, why I, I can do this. Yeah. And that led into the conversation with you and, and joining up. Yeah, no, yeah. And, it, and it's it's awesome. And you and and you were you were down when you started with us. You were at two. Uh, you were about two forty. Yeah, it was right around two. I think when you and I first had our first conversation, I was at two forty five, and then when yeah. I joined the program, I was at two forty one. But I want to tell you something that I've never shared with you before. I always get surprises here. That's I so know, and I, I, and I've ahead. never really I've never really shared this with anyone. But I went in to see the doctor thinking that it was going to be a good visit because I had gotten down to 245 mm -hmm. and uh, without seemingly trying, I was like, well, whatever I'm doing is working because I'm, you know, I'm losing weight. So, you know, I went to the doctor and he gave me the typical bad news. My blood work was awful. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, well, I'm really surprised because, you know, I've lost weight since the last time I saw you. And he says, well, he said, Stuart, diabetes eats you from the inside out. The diabetes is why you're losing the weight. It's eating away at you. And that really, you know, that really woke me up. And I, you know, th that and a, you know, a few other things are, I was like, I need to, I need to get this under control. And I, I think I can do it. Um, and, you know, the rest is, the rest is history. Well, so you came in at, at that because you've been you you've been at a high of three hundred. You you lost you lost that before to you know full disclosure. You lost that before yeah. you got to me, and you but you were stuck around the two in the two forties for how many years? I was stuck in the two forties for years. I can't even tell you how many years. Really, in the two fifties, the two forties, and mm -hmm. I had gotten very comfortable there and thought, mm -hmm. you know, size forty two pants. That's not bad. I had been wearing a forty six and. You know, I was still in a double XL, you know, shirt, but I thought, you know, my waist size is, is shrinking. So I got real complacent there and um, but was not at all controlling the disease that I had. And um, and I knew it could be controlled, you know, um, so I, it was it was conscientiously having to make the choice. Do I want to live, you know, or do I want to die? And I think one of the most powerful things was. Um, I lost my dad who had diabetes, type two diabetes when he was 59 years old. Wow. And here I was, you know, about 60, 61. And I, my dad didn't get to enjoy, enjoy his retirement. And I said to myself, by golly, you have worked hard for this retirement that's coming. I mean, I have stocked away the money, right? You know, yeah. and I don't want to die like my dad did before I can enjoy my retirement. So that was sort of another, you know, groundbreaking movement of let's, let's get this thing going. 
Yeah, and then you and then you lean into the process. And, yeah, you know, walk walk people, you know, what it was like going into as now in where you're. Do you mind sharing where you're at now? You know, you're five. You're five foot. Tell if you don't mind telling. Yeah, I'm about. I'm I'm almost. I like to say I'm almost five nine. Okay, cool. <laughs> and, five, almost five nine. And, um, you know, I, uh, I weighed in this morning at 200.2, uh, my low so far is, uh, you know, 199.8. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, this is, and you're, I don't and ever, you're going to one, what do you mind? Well, telling me? you know, when I first talked with you, I, you asked me what I wanted to be. And I think my response was, I think if I can just get below 190, Mm -hmm. I'd be a happy camper. And you said, well, let's say 189.9. <laughs> right. and, and that was refreshing, you know, because I really did sort of dread the call with you because it, mm -hmm. it was a, it was really a come to Jesus. You know, I'm either going to do this mm -hmm. or I'm not. And, you know, when you said, well, let's do 189.9, I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's it. let's do 189.9. So and, and you got in and you did the work you did. the yeah. and, and when I say the work and people think it's it's mindset and it's pieces of puzzle that that you weren't doing, you already you know, the the exercise and the food, you know, is that important? Of course it is. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, it's the things that we're missing. The 90, in my opinion, is the 98 percent that the that the people, you know, out here that are obese are struggling with and just like I was when I was struggling with obesity just like you were when you used to struggle with obesity yeah and, and so because it's a past tense now and yeah. so walk, walk everybody kind of through what it was like in that first doctor's appointment and then maybe that May doctor's appointment too which is pretty cool as you're is you're seeing that in in a and I'm gonna ask you a couple other questions too yeah so you know I I jumped right into the program and I got real serious about it. I changed my eating habits entirely. And I, you know, I knew enough. Uh, well, first of all, it was refreshing for me to be told by you that you are not going to tell me what to eat uh, because I think I would have fought that because I know what I needed to eat. I, I knew what I needed to be putting in my body. And, um, and so I jumped in and, um, you know, I started losing weight and I had a, I had an appointment with my endocrinologist in March, and I think by then I was maybe down about 20 pounds, maybe when I went in, uh, you know, in March, maybe 18, something like that. Well, my A1C had dropped from a high of like 9.2 to 6.4 in three months. Wow. Um, and so I knew that what I was doing, you know, was, was working. And, you know, and that was, um, you know, if I ever needed some encouragement, um, that that certainly helped. And, um, you know, and so I just kind of stuck at it. And I, you know, as you know, I got real frustrated in April because I hit a plateau and I just couldn't seem to get past, you know, 224, 225. I was up and down a pound here, a pound, you know, and it was just driving me crazy. And I think the old Stuart would have said, well, that's it. This is this is as good as it's going to get. Mm -hmm. And I'm 225 now and I haven't been that in, you know, 30 years. So let's mm -hmm. be happy with it. But I just kept I just kept doing the things that I knew were right and hope that the scale would catch up with me. And it sure did. Um, yeah, after, yeah, yeah. After about three, you know, three, maybe four weeks, it just started dropping again. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then I, I had a, an appointment with my endocrinologist in May. Um, he wanted to check some other numbers. And so I didn't wait the full three or four months that I normally wait. He wanted me to come back in May. And my A1C had dropped again to 5.8, like below six. And so he starts, you know, he started taking me off the of medication. Oh, and, cool. And, yeah. And, you, and this was not your body eating itself up. This is your this body was, building it back. It was building deliberate. Back. Yeah. He, and I think I may have told you this story. I was mm -hmm. sitting in his office. I had gone in early to do my blood work, you know, a day or two before mm -hmm. I went in and he had my file open and he was flipping pages back and forth and back and forth. And finally I got irritated with him and I said, what are you looking for? And he said, I'm looking for something that's wrong. <laughs> and, I, and I don't, and I don't see it. And um, he said, "I'm going to start taking you off medication." And he said, "Let you know." So he took me off. Um, he took me off two medicines, 
And he said, I want you back in September. We're going to do all this again. And if you're doing what I think you're doing and you're still doing it, then he said, you're going to come off of more. So, uh, yeah. So, um, so and, you're, like, you're like wanting to go to the doctor now. Yeah. Just now instead of going, <laughs> doctor. Yeah. You know, I, uh, uh, I tell you, you know, from leaving the doctor's office and being, you know, worn out and fatigued and depressed and stopping by McDonald's to being able to drive by that very same McDonald's and have no urge to pull in, you know, but to go home and prepare myself, you know, a healthy lunch was, uh, you know, that that was about as good a feeling as, you know, getting that great report at the doctor. That's awesome. Yeah, that's incredible. Now you just you just got back from a pretty cool trip that you do every year. Yes, and um, and you um, it's you go see some friends cross country. Well, yeah. you're already halfway already. I'm on the east coast, so you're you're halfway there in my my world. But but you went to San Francisco, which San Francisco there's like more restaurants there I think right. than any city in the world probably. Mm -hmm. You go out there, they hadn't seen you but since before COVID. Correct. I hadn't seen you since you started the lose weight. Tell tell everybody how did that feel walking in there and seeing you know your two close friends. Yeah. And and then also come back. You lost weight. In, who loses weight in San Francisco? Yeah. I mean that's. I mean who does that? Yeah. Well, I guess they do. <laughs> um, yeah. You know I I hadn't seen. I've been friends with these you know people for thirty five years. We've been you know. Their parents and my parents were friends, so it's mm -hmm. you know uh, a big attachment. I uh, my friend Mary Ellen came to pick me up at the airport, and uh, she sent me a text message and just said, you know, text me when you're leaving the plane. Mm -hmm. So I sent her a text message when I was leaving the plane. She had no idea that I had been working on my health and that I'd been losing weight. And I sent her a text message and I said, I'm off the plane, I'll be at the curb in five minutes. And I said, and I'm wearing blue jeans and a white polo. Mm -hmm. And she sent me a text message back and said, ha ha, like I won't recognize you. And I saw her coming and she drove past me. <laughs> she drove past that. me at the curb and so I called her and I said, you just drove past me. And she said, I did? And I said, yeah. And she said, okay, well, I'm gonna go around again. So I, she went around and I saw her coming. So I flagged her down. And she used to just usually pull up at the curb and I'd throw my luggage in and, you know, hop in the car and she pulled up and she got out of the car and she said, oh my God. She said, I have never known you with a flat stomach. How cool is that? So, that, feel, that, so was, that? Was that worth a million bucks? What it was, was that? A million bucks, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then what I was just really so great is that she just totally, she immediately bought into it and she said, we are only eating healthy. We are not going to eat any desserts. We are, she said, I want to support this. And so we did, even though we went out several times, we only ate really healthy and she prepared very healthy, nutritious meals and we ate at home. And I, wa I kept up my walking every day and I lost weight while I was on vacation. <laughs> Yeah, and and what's interesting, and I and I normally don't ask this, but it but it comes to mind. I mean, have you felt deprived food wise? No, I have not. I have I not. Mean, you've, been, you've been eating. You've been eating. Yeah. I mean, you've obviously had to pay attention. It wasn't right. like a magic. Like we didn't. I, I don't sell magic pills, so you you. But you did the work. But yeah. but it was. But you've been been able to eat what you wanted. Yeah. You didn't get. You didn't go to comfort food at McDonald's though. That was, no, no, and you know, I, I think that. I got, you know, I, I think when I started the plan, I just said, this is my new way of eating and this is the way it's going to be. And really within two weeks, I was into a routine and, um, and I, you know, I've never felt, you know, really deprived. And on, on July 4th, Mary Ellen said, I'm going to make a lemon pound cake. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you'll feel okay if you just have one piece? And I said, I'm going to have a piece of pound cake. Absolutely. Sure. And it, Absolutely. you know, it didn't, uh, it didn't set me back. I didn't feel guilty about it. You know, I stepped on the scale the next morning and, you know, I had lost weight. And so it was all, it was all good. Well, you know, it's interesting. Angie, who works with me with Rethink Dining, you know, Angie, I know just so that other people know, but Angie and I talked to so many men and women 
that think, oh, I've got to figure out exactly what to eat that I can eat the rest of my life or I'm not going to start anything. And oh, by the way, I'm going through the the drive through at the fast food place and going to have Kit Kats for dessert and while I'm figuring it out. And and that doesn't work. What, what you did and what it's you built the muscle as you went and you learned what to do and and you know the price. It's not that you'll never have another piece of cake. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, Me and I. I was just going to say, you know, even for, you know, July 4th, I, I ate a little barbecue. I ate a very small portion of potato salad. I had a piece of lemon pound cake. And I, I think the thing that I've learned in this group is I've learned to pay attention to my stomach. You know, I used to be an eater by the clock. If mm. it was noon, it was lunch and I needed to eat. If it was six, it was dinner and I needed to eat. I didn't even ask myself, are you even hungry? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and now that's been replaced with, you're not even really hungry yet. So why are you putting anything in your mouth? You know, wait until you're starting to feel a little bit of hunger, um, you know, before you eat. And uh, that has worked. Uh, that, that has been a tremendous difference for me to listen to my stomach as opposed to looking at the clock. Yeah. And it's, it, but it's learning what worked for you. It's right. learning what works for you. Yeah. And it, and it's, and, and it is interesting. Everybody does something different and people say, well, how does that work? Well, it's, it's always a decision. Yep. It's never a diet. I mean, right. it's always a decision. And and so you've done so well. So yeah. now you've got an, a pretty incredible trip planned mm -hmm. that you, um, I mean, t talk about that. So like, where does this take you now? I mean, you're, you're within about 10 pounds of being at your, your ideal weight. Mm -hmm. Which you when and I never tell I never told you what to weigh other than I suggested a, a one tenth of a pound just so yeah. you know what I, that was it <laughs> but but it's but it you're almost there I mean talk about the trip you got planned if you don't mind and talk about you know what other stuff does it make possible now you know you you've got you've you've won I mean you're really at the finish line you're winning yeah. it. Yeah, well, I, I'm I'm close, and that's exciting. And I, you know, I think that in terms of your question, um, it just opens up all kinds of possibilities and opportunities, you know, for me. I've got a really good close group of friends here in Houston, and we're gonna about a year ago we started talking about taking a trip um, out to Portland, uh, and we're you know wanted to rent a house out near the Columbia River Gorge and we wanted to go hiking and we wanted to go hike up Multnomah Falls and um, and I, you know I was all in because it sounded fun but I was also seriously very concerned because at the weight that I was I didn't know that I could keep up um, we had been a year before to the Grand Canyon together and um, I I struggled. Um, you know, to kind of keep up with the group. Uh, you know, I think I told you the story about we had climbed down into a, you know, into a cavern and then on the climb back up, I was the last one up. I had to stop several times just to catch my breath and recover just to get to the top. And it was sort of humiliating to get to the top of that cavern and they were all there waiting on me. Um, and I, you know, I, I seriously, um, you know, feel like this trip coming up, um, you know, I, I'm not going to have any difficulty with the climbs. Uh, it's, they'll it's be trying, they'll be trying to keep up with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So, but it's just, you know, the confidence level I feel, you know, I'm going into, I, you know, with, with the pandemic, I, I've been working from home. Um, but I'm starting to go in occasionally now to the office and I'm going in tomorrow for a meeting with a group of people who have not seen me since before the pandemic. Oh. Wow. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I'm not a, never a person that looked forward to meetings because I was always that person that walked into a room and immediately looked around to see if I was the fattest person in there. And, um, you know, and now I'm excited about going. I'm excited. I have to do a little bit of a presentation. Um, I'm excited about getting up in front of the group and, um, you know, doing my presentation. And I, I feel more ready for that than I've ever felt in my entire career, really. Well you, well, you don't have that in, in I mean, anybody who struggled with obesity like you and I have, I mean, you yeah. don't have that, that creature around your neck anymore. Right. That is, that right. it's work that works up between your ears that just stops you in your tracks. And like I said, I mean, the health is so important, but if the health was going to solve, if the health would make us get, get the weight off, everybody would have a 32 inch waist, a 34 right. inch waist, you know, but, yeah. It, yeah. but it doesn't, it's, it's what it was costing 
know, when you sit down and look at the cost of all of the, mm -hmm. the shade and, and all of the time stepping into that room and wondering, you know, if you were the only one that was going to, you know, grab a donut or something. Right. And right. I mean, now, now it's like, if you want one, you get one, you don't even think about it. I right. mean, it, you know, but, but there's so many things with that. So what yeah. do you feel like And and nobody's got a crystal ball, but what does this do to, you know, you talked about your dad and his, you know, his story. I mean, what do you, what do you think he would say to you? Oh, I think he would just be out of this world, crazy happy. You know, my dad was a very successful businessman, very successful. Um, but he, you know, I was doing what he was doing, which was slowly killing himself. And it caught up with him. Um, and uh, I think that he would be so pleased that, you know, because when I when I think about the future now, I actually think about how much fun I'm going to have in retirement, um, you know, how I'm going to be able to, travel with ease and I'm going to be able to get around and I'm going to be healthy, um, you know, and I'm not going to have to worry about so much illness and, and disease, um, you know, in my body. So um, I think he would just be thrilled that I'm going to make it to, you know, unless I get thrown under a bus, I'm going to make it to retirement and I'm going to have a happy, healthy retirement. That is so neat to have, you know, to just have a different perspective. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and you, we, and nobody's promised tomorrow. I mean, we're, we're not, yeah. but it, but at the end of the day, I mean, when, you know, it's like, I say this all the time. I mean, when we go play in traffic all the time and when I mean play in traffic, I mean, eating ourselves into what we feel like is comfort at the time, but eating our in self self into not only the shame and the, the, the embarrassment and all those things, but an early death. You know, it's like playing in traffic and hope that you don't get run over. Absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, and now, now it's like you can outrun the cars probably. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's no, that's so awesome. Well, well, uh, it's so, such a joy to see it. But, you know, I think about the guy I talked to on, on uh, December 30th. Mm -hmm. And if I had told you, you were going to be here and I didn't tell you, and I told you, you know, I was pretty confident when I listened to, to some things yeah. that you said, I said, oh, we'll get you there if you'll do the work and you've done the work and you're almost there. And well, I mean, you're first of all, what do you what would you say to somebody that would say to you, Stuart, you'll never keep this weight on? I, I would say there is absolutely no way I'm not. I, I, it's it, I'll never put it back on. I, I just am 100 percent sure of that. I will never put it back on. How cool is that? The guy that I talked to at, on, on December 30th was not sure that he could get to, right. to under that. And that's, but that's so, so cool. And, yeah. Well, it gives other people hope too, because, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, it, it is, it is always a decision. It's never, it, well, I've not run into it yet mm -hmm. where, you know, in first world countries, we know what to eat. We know what exercises do what yep. works you haven't have you done insane exercise i mean just no i you know i've i've simply walked i've got a dog and mm -hmm. um you know thankfully he loves to walk and so i would get out every day with him and uh the more i walked him the more he enjoyed it and the more the weight you know really it, it helped the weight you know come off and um so yeah i know i haven't been doing anything crazy other than a healthy diet and walking and it, yeah i mean yeah. you don't have to so it's so cool but the, but you did the hard work on the mindset piece you did those things that that are uncomfortable yeah but necessary and so so great job and and guys thanks so much for being with me Stuart. and for those of you guys that are watching this that are that are curious you know kind of what how this works. Um, the program that we have is Rethink Dieting, and you can go and uh, Stuart saw this uh, same video, RethinkDieting.com, and it talks about men, but we, uh, my wife and I, Angie, now work with uh, ladies too. We've got several ladies in the program, and if you're struggling with weight and you're just stuck and you don't know what to do, um, you can book a call at TransformMyFuture.com forward slash apply. And the and have, we'll have the same kind of conversation that Stuart and I had, and we'll see if it's a fit, or and we'll come up with a game plan to to get you to your ideal weight. So, Stuart, man, it is you have been just an absolute joy to watch through this. It's you came in very, 
Mm, I hope this works. I, I mean, I knew that was going through your mind like a lot of people, and you have absolutely. I, I was describing you to a friend today. I said, I said, this guy has, you know, Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. You know, several of you guys, it's just you, you, you came in and you, it's like, this is fun. I can have fun with this, and you have. So yeah. great job. Congratulations and, and on the success. And gosh, wonder how many years you added. Well, yeah, and I, you know, I, I wish I had done it sooner. And, uh, you know, I think I told you when I, you know, when you and I first met that I am uh, an intensely private person. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to be at a place now where I'm excited to be in a group and posting my weight and talking about my successes as well as my failures and, you know, getting support from the group, I, I wish I had done it, you know, years and years ago. Yeah. And, and you're you're out here in front of everybody on Facebook. Too. Right. So, you know, if right. I told you you had to do this, you'd have probably said no. And that's a deal breaker. Yeah. But it was but I invited you to do this because yes, I, I just I just want because I just think that, you know, there's so many people out there. I mean, it, and I say it over and over. I mean, we we give we worry about all these things that seem so important, but we're literally giving away our entire life and our entire potential to, yes. to and using a fork and spoon to kill ourselves. Yes. And so um, great That's job fun. on taking your life back, my friend. Thank you. It's that been so to awesome. be, uh, been a pleasure to be with you on the ride. Uh, it is, it is fun to watch you soar. So guys have a great night and go to rethinkdieting.com and watch that video. If you want to know the five step secret to learn what Stuart's been doing. So have a great night. Take care. Thanks Alan.